All right, hello everyone. We're going to get started. Um, my name is Sean Smith. I'm the administrator at Grace Christian School. And I'm here tonight because uh, addiction has taken its toll in my family. Uh, my own personal path uh, to the Lord led through drug addiction. And there were, you know, many times when I could have died or a few times when death was literally knocking at my door. Um, addictions has claimed the life of two of my family members and most recently my aunt, um, Jennifer Leonard, who is represented up here. Um, so anyways, this is uh, something that's near and dear to my heart and I know it's uh, all of us here have that common connection. So thank you for coming tonight. And I was going to open tonight in prayer. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for this life that you've given us. The Bible says in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, I thank you that as we're living this life, we can experience love. Lord, we know that you love us. The Bible says you are love. It says, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son Jesus to be the covering for our sins. Tonight we remember our loved ones who have been taken from us by addiction. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity we had to love them. I pray, Lord, for everyone that's here that you would wrap your arms of comfort and love around each one, around those that couldn't come as well. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Father God, we thank you. I just pray, Lord, for your comfort tonight. Father, I just... Tonight's also a night to remember our loved ones and to celebrate the life that they lived, to remember the good times, Lord, even to laugh and to smile. Lord God, as we live this life, give us strength that if we see someone headed down the spiral of addiction, to do everything we can to help. Father God, I just thank you. Send us your comfort this night. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, good evening everybody. My name uh, is Ken Sigsbury and I'm um, the director at Turning Point. I took over um, January 1. I, I would like to say thank you for everyone that's attending this evening. I, I would like to uh, thank everyone that has donated, um, whether it be music or food for this evening, um, and, and of course our volunteers and our staff members. Um, okay. But, but more definitive, definitively, um, I identify with being afflicted with substance use disorder and I'm in long-term recovery. We are gathered here today to remember people we've lost due to addiction. In my recovery, I've learned two things. The most two important days in your life is the day you were born and the day you found out why. Living in addiction robs us from the second most important day. Living in recovery brings back this option. In 2015, there were 44 people in the state of Vermont who passed away from opiate-related overdoses. 2016, the number grew to 106. Last year, 104 people died from prescription drug overdoses, up 66 from 2015. According to the Great 
previous annual of course report to overdose deaths in 2016 were the highest in at least the past decade. About half of these deaths are due to fentanyl overdoses, which is prescription opioids, but often made illegally. There was also a steep increase in the number of heroin deaths, nearly doubling from 29 in 2015 to 51 in 2016. I, I am very tired of going to wakes for young people who, who never had a chance to experience life. This disease is destroying an entire generation. I consider addiction a kidnapper. It lures our loved ones into a trap in a cycle they alone cannot escape. Recovery works. The most important part of recovery is not just abstaining from the use of drugs and alcohol, it's learning how to live our lives. So much sadness in the world. Some of us find alcohol and drugs to distract us or forget the pain. But when we think we have found the answer, we find out that we were tricked and start it starts taking away everything we had loved and it turns us into someone we hate. A lot of people feel as though addiction is a choice. Is it a choice to live in shame? Is it a choice to wake up hating yourself every day? Is it a choice to live with addiction constantly calling your name? Is it a choice to be so sick we can't we completely shut down? Is it a choice to lie, steal, and cheat? Is it a choice to be disowned by your friends and family? Is it a choice to gamble daily with our lives by putting possibly a lethal dose of poison into our bodies? Is it a choice to die? We as a community need to come together, focusing on prevention, treatment, and recovery. I have learned abstinence is not the answer. Living life as it was intended to be is the answer. Recovery works. Life is too short for us to not live it to its full potential. We need to have purpose as human beings and sometimes we get lost along the way. And we need to know we can reach out to people who have been lost themselves and found their way back. That's what recovery is. We are all on this big blue marble together. All we have is each other. Let's take care of each other. Let's help each other. The effect we have on others is our most valuable currency. Success is not getting what we want in life. Sometimes success is surviving what we didn't want. Uh, thank you, and uh, we're going to have a little bit uh, of a song here, and then uh, Thomas is going to come up and read a letter for us. Yeah. 
you better take it easy Try to find a way out Better start believing in yourself So now we're going to hear from our brand new youth coordinator, Thomas Brusso. My name is Thomas. I'm an addict in recovery. And this letter is called Dear Family and Friends. I'm an addict representing all addicts. I might be your daughter, your son, husband, wife, mother, father, or friend. The drugs have robbed me of my willpower. Though I may have started using drugs by choice, the disease has progressed. I now have no choice but to use them. Please try to understand that I suffer from a disease and that my drug use is not the result of a moral failing or weakness of will. Simply put, I want to stop but cannot. I appreciate your attempts to help me get clean, though I may not always have welcomed them. You argued with me, you reasoned with me, you tried to bribe or threaten me. But your efforts have been ineffective because they were based on the false belief that I have the power to stop my drug use if I wanted to. You wouldn't be angry at me for having cancer or diabetes. The scolding and the lecturing are actually counterproductive because they make me feel even more ashamed and guilty than I already do. Please realize that addiction thrives in shame and guilt. Though I know it is hard to understand, the fact is I have a disease, the disease of addiction. As with any chronic illness, willpower will not heal me, and neither will your attempts to convince me that I am hurting myself. Deep down, I have known that for a long time. The sad truth, as I suffer from obsessions and cravings beyond my control. I made promises that I would stop, but never kept those promises. Many times, I was simply telling you what you wanted to hear to get you off my back. It is also true, though, that many times I really meant to keep those promises. I realized that raising your hopes with promises that I would stop was cruel, and those false promises affected your life severely and only drew you deeper into this insanity that is part of my addiction. I don't know how this happened, why I became addicted to drugs. I know that you feel guilty as if somehow you are responsible for my condition, but these types of feelings are only enabling me to con continue using drugs. Though it may be hard to believe, Helping me to get out of trouble only prolongs my addiction and suffering. Better let me suffer the consequences of my behavior, as I will have a better chance of coming out of denial. Covering up for me to save the good name of the family has only made the problem worse. Though I am genuinely sorry for the shame and disgrace my behavior has brought on the family. I want you to believe that you did not cause my addiction, and neither do you have the power to control or cure it. This disease that is affecting us all so bad 
is bigger than all of us. The best way you can help me is to comprehend your own lack of power over the disease of addiction and accept that your lives too have become unmanageable as a result of it. The good news is, is that there is a solution and I can recover. What I need is what these recovering addicts have, namely the proper kind of help and support to take actions necessary to recover from this disease. You can help me too, and that is by helping yourselves. It has been shown that addicts have more chance of recovering when their families start to distance themselves from the insanity of the addiction. Having my family consumed by my addiction instead of living their own lives is a barrier to my recovery. I ask you to keep the focus on your own lives and give me the right and respect to live my life, however destructive it may be. I know letting go of me and my addiction is difficult, but there is much experience that shows this is the most effective way to help me. There are organizations designed to support the family of addicts. They have a long history of helping family members of addicts learn to overcome the distorted thinking and emotional pain that comes from living with addiction. On top of helping yourselves, you will be helping me because you'll be learning how to, how to avoid perpetuating the disease. You will stop being enablers and become people who have rediscovered their own priorities in life. Thank you for loving me, for trying to help me. I look forward to the day when I have regained your trust and support based on my commitment to recovery. I know it will take time for this to happen, but I finally feel as though I have the courage and strength to beat this disease and start living a life that makes me happy and fulfilled, and we can have many happy family memories to come in the future. Thanks. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, and now um, we're going to, uh, Bonnie Lynch has uh, written a beautiful poem for us. Um, she's the author, and she's agreed to come up and recite it to us. wonderful when he was sober, but when he drank, he was extremely abusive, and those words fall very heavy on your heart and your mind, and as a child growing up with that, you spend a lifetime trying to get over the ills of those harsh words. I never knew my dad, my biological dad. He uh, abandoned our family when I was three years old. I found him when I was 21 and uh, finally found where he lived. I was gonna go see him. I was on my way to work when I actually found out where he had lived and found out his location. And it was early in the morning. I passed by his house. I'm like, I better not, better not go now. I'll go over the weekend to, to introduce myself and meet my father actually for the first time. Two days later, he fell asleep with a cigarette in his hand. He had drank too much, like many times before. He died in that fire along with his two children. It's been a sequence of having to deal with heartache and tragedy through alcoholism or addiction. Um, in the Bennington community and beyond, so many people are suffering. 
you know, the fact that so many people are here this evening together gathered, you know, with a hopeful spirit, with a heavy heart. Um, we're so fortunate to have the turning point, you know, as a place for uh, people struggling to turn to. And I encourage everyone, you know, if you can in some way, whether it's volunteerism or to give a dime or ten dollars or thousands, please give to this organization because they're worthy and so many, so many people struggling with addiction need them. I wrote this poem um, for someone I love with all my heart that's presently in the throes of addiction. And um, I feel privileged to share it with all of you. It's called The Addiction Ship. You sailed off on the addiction ship, the tide sweeping you away. I'm standing on the shoreline begging you to stay. The current moves so swiftly you wait, fade away from your view. The drug now holds you captive, the nightmare has come true. Light dances on the water, past and present merges one. I pray that you'll return to me on the wings of the rising sun. I see your face in childhood when dreams danced in your eyes. I held you close when you were scared, finding truth beneath the lies. The pillow holds the memories of your laughter and your tears when prayers were softly whispered as seasons disappeared. You left a single feather on your journey to take flight. Now my nest once full is empty as you wandered out of sight. You slipped away in silence, drugs easing guilt and pain. How many nights did you cry alone, feeling hopeless and ashamed? You have given up your childhood dreams to embrace the perfect high. But my love for you is endless, and I'll never say goodbye. So I'll wait here on the shoreline, praying you'll come back to me. I will hold you close and never let you go till you're clean and straight and free. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Bonnie. We appreciate it. Um, we're we're going to go and start lighting the candles kind of in a chain reaction way. I'll, I'll start and we'll pass it around.
Okay, we'd like to ask anyone that uh, would like to mention the person's name of a loved one who's passed away due to addiction, you're welcome to come up now and state the name. my sister about three years ago. I have two sisters, two brothers, and she was my, she was the youngest. We lost her, she was like 24 at the time. Well, her name was Wendy, Wendy Tracy. Jennifer Leonard. I like to remember my father, Nathan Etna, who died at the age of 63. Thank you. Jeffrey Hoig. have not called, we remember you. Okay, thank you, Maria, um, for reading all those names. I, I'd like to um, invite everyone to uh, come back to the church, the Baptist Church on Main Street, 601 Main Street. Uh, We'll have some food and some fellowship there. Um, and I, I want to thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Like a small boat 
on the ocean Sending big waves into motion Like how a single word can make a heart open I might only have one match But I can make an explosion All those things I didn't say Wrecking balls inside my brain I was waiting last night Everybody's worried about me Into deep Say I'm into 